let's go back to the opening of Cats. There you are. You've got your backers. You've got your deal. You're going into the Elgin, which you know hasn't run for whether for forty years or not. Um, were you nervous in the in the tech rehearsals and dress rehearsals, thinking, "Here we go"? Actually, no. I was so no because I was so busy, and it was so funny. <laughs> Even the Canadian crew was saying, "You'll be glad to get rid of the the UK guys. They're making more long distance phone calls than you want to know about." <laughs> phoning home and stuff. I mean, they got to be, it got to be a real, plus we got nailed uh, 10 days before, two weeks maybe, before we opened. And we had a call from New York saying that seven of the people had decided to patent the, the stuff in the show, you know, the smoke out of the tire and the rumble seat on the car that they decided they wanted to get paid royalties because they'd patent them and that was another million dollars i mean but that, that wasn't was in the original nerve. deal but they they had to be paid or we couldn't use them but the funny thing was um I, that was the worst day of my life we had a breakfast meeting with the investors and we had to say listen you know this has happened and they said oh it's okay don't worry <laughs> I mean, they put money, more money in the pot. Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Because we had to, or they went. But they so, so I had to be clear though. This, so this is uh, someone in New York who created a stage effect of smoke coming out of a tire, and then they say to you, "If you're going to have smoke coming out of a tire, you got to pay me." That's right. Yeah, they had a lot of those. Some of them got, didn't get it, but seven of them did. Are those legit requests, yes. or are they? Yes. They are okay. And what happened was. Even the crew got upset. And, and I have to say, too, in all honesty, Ayatsi was fabulous. Ayatsi actually invested in the show, too. We got, I said to Jimmy Fuller, well, you know, put money in the show, and then you don't need to worry. It'll be fine. So not that simple, but anyway. Um, so, so I want to go back to the list of requests, smoke from the tire. How many of those were the, how many of those came in saying, you got to pay, we have a royalty? Seven. Seven, and were all seven accepted, or you went on them case by case basis? Yeah. The one of the smoke coming out of the tire, our crew decided they could figure this out. They didn't need, I mean, they were mad too. It was a, an, a very unfair, unusual request. But what you're sitting there 10 days before you open, you got to do something. So they worked night and day to do it. Every day I'd walk in and they'd say, we're getting there, we're getting there, Marlene. Oh, so that's fun. one of the seven. Did you have to pay for the other oh, six? Yeah. Oh yeah, we did just, there was no choice. Anyway, they didn't want to and, and they worked. And the day before the dress rehearsal, I walked in and they had the champagne out and the glasses and, everything and said, we did it, we did it, let's celebrate. And that's what we use for that. It and was the guy so in New York is fuming because he didn't get his royalty? <laughs> he didn't get his royalty. But Do you think they waited until 10 days before opening? Probably. Probably. There are a lot of You don't have a people. suspicious mind. <laughs> you have a oh, suspicious I, yeah, mind. I do, but I know when I'm dealing with it. I think that the Schubert's had no idea either. Right. I, I think it hit them too. I know it did, and uh, the fact that I, our guys worked so hard to have it happen. But I didn't worry because we had sold so many tickets, you didn't need to worry, believe me. But also, we always do a dress rehearsal with invited people, you know, people who worked on the show, and we filled the elk, and they went berserk. It was probably the biggest response I've ever seen in any theater at any time, from just the people who had worked on the show and, you know, friends here and there too, of course. I was just astounded. The number I hated most got the biggest standing ovation in the middle of the show. Which is what number? <laughs> Peaks and pollicles, <laughs> all those silly things, and their tap dance. I mean, it was fabulous, but I thought, gee whiz. But um, four days before the show, I thought they, uh, for, from that dress rehearsal, I thought, this is never going to happen. I walked into the theater, and they, they all we did was paint the theater black, because it didn't matter. It was a garbage dump. Um, the Elgin was a garbage dump. Yes, 
Yeah. So you painted all the walls black. All the walls were painted black. But and did the Ministry of uh, Culture <laughs> in Ontario have to say, okay, fine? We didn't tell them. We just did what we had to do. But, they but the, wait a minute. There's two balconies in the Elgin, no one balcony. Two it balconies. Was, yeah, the, one. The, the, so you yeah, painted everything is black. Everything black. Yeah. But we had all the grids down and everything because they were putting up the lighting for the final time. I mean, it was a mess. And unfortunately, that was the day some of the investors decided to come and see it. Well, even I thought this will never happen in four days. But boy, they made it happen. And, and what did the investors think when they walked into a place that looked <laughs> chaos? <laughs> the same thing I did. This is never going to happen in four days. <laughs> but um, it did. No, everybody, it was a real team effort. It really was. It was great fun to do it, but really tiring.